Hi everyone. This one's going to seem a little bit ironic, um, but me driving this BMW is trying to teach people today a little about signalling and why maybe not signalling isn't as bad as what most people think. think people's ability to signal correctly on the road in general is pretty poor. People signal too routinely, people signal as they're moving rather than prior to moving. The signal should be there to show other people our intentions and the signal isn't for our benefit it's for other people's benefit and people forget that. But maybe actually concentrate on other people's poor signalling too much. Have a look at the vehicle in front. It doesn't signal to make its turn. So me and my pupil have a chat about it. I didn't, uh, didn't really know that. I just kind of slowed down just because they were slowing down a yeah. But what would they be slowing down for? To turn. If there was no one in front of them. Oh, just to turn, really, yeah. So did you know that they were going to turn without the, without the signal, without the indicator? Kind of. Yeah, you did, absolutely did, perfect. Good job. So what we're going to be looking at today is a number of videos. These videos are of different scenarios that I've picked out where the signals aren't important, but the reading of the body language of other drivers and riders is important. I'm going to try and help people understand that those little flashing amber lights at the front corners, sides and back aren't as important as you think. One of my viewers here does a great job and quickly susses out where the oncoming car is going. It's dead easy now I freeze frame the clip, but to do this in real time is skillful. Even though the black Nissan Qashqai does have a right signal on, its position and speed are much more useful in assessing the risk and danger. Even if it's got a signal on or not, if you don't pick up on this steering movement, you're going to have problems. And the other driver is still waving his hand. Hmm. I did read a report online uh, the other week where I um, saw a quote that people not signalling is one of the most annoying things that road users actually find on the road. Um, people not signalling doesn't annoy me, it's just as it is and people aren't very good at signalling. But it doesn't affect me in the slightest because a signal, don't forget, it's just a little flashing orange light. Even if someone's got a signal on it doesn't mean that you're able to act off that. You actually need to see what that person's doing before you actually act. So if you think about it, when people say, eh, they didn't signal at a roundabout, is that because you aren't very good at picking up on maybe eye contact if it's daylight or the speed of people? or their position, or even their hand position on the steering wheel, or even where they're looking. It probably is. So if you are one of those people who just moan about others not signalling, it generally means is that's all that you look for. It doesn't mean, like I said, you, you go when you see a signal anyway. You need to make sure that that vehicle who has the signal on is actually doing what they are intending or showing with that signal. So therefore, it's actually less important than people think. This viewer's clip is on a road that I know very well in Liverpool. We'll watch it through and then we'll go back over it in a sec. Did you just think that that car needed to signal? If you did, you don't pick up on the other clues enough. Let's have a look again, and I'll explain a few things. The car in front's brake lights are the first thing, and combining them with the lack of vehicles in front of this Ford, 
you know it's either going to park in or turn. With the brake light still being on, the junction being clear and the Ford being slow enough to make this turn, we know it's going to stop. The driver just has zero awareness of anyone around. My pupil Beth is a little hesitant here because she stares at the cyclist rather than seeing that he's slowing down and giving way. What's he doing? He's setting the park. Thank you, cyclist. All right, which he should do. Yeah. But I honestly thought that you were a little bit hesitant there. When he wasn't coming past, yeah. you should have just gone. gone. Yeah. And it's the delay that then causes potential problems with the cyclist. Yeah. Do you understand? Because he then thinks you're giving way to yeah. him. This is me driving in this clip. And although I don't use an indication, my signals are perfectly clear, or should be, to all others around. Let's have a look at it. Up near the green and white delivery van, there's a Mercedes SUV coming the other way. But I pull in to the left and hold back and stop. That should be telling the Mercedes I'm giving way. But they don't read the script. They're still not. Eventually they get it. I can sort of see why they were going to hold back and let me go because of the red light behind me. However, when you've got priority and someone else has given you that priority, take it. The car coming the opposite way with its lights on is showing me at the moment it's holding back. So I don't change my speed and I carry on. But then it comes through and I have to slow. Now I'm not fussed about slowing down, I'm always ready to, but the silver Mercedes should have done a little better with what they were telling other people. And that's the thing that people don't get because they rely on signals. So what's your thoughts on those clips? Is there anything more that you would add? Is there anything more that you need to pick up on? Um, we've had a few of those scenarios and situations where an indicator wasn't used but the point I'm trying to make is the signals really most reliably got from actually what the other vehicle or what the other driver or rider is doing and people don't do that in general they tend to just look at the hazard or the vehicle or the car or the motorbike or the cycle rather than actually what they're doing and this causes hesitancy and all kinds of issues on the road. Here's another example. Look at the oncoming traffic and the taxi driver in particular. He's not signalling. Did you know the taxi was going to turn without the signal there? Well, the exit's position. Perfect. Perfect example, isn't it? So even when the vehicle in front of you um, goes to park in and doesn't signal, um, it's absolutely irrelevant a lot of the time if you're picking up on the other clues. For example, if the vehicle in front is using the brake lights, like we saw in one of those clips there, it's using its brake lights and it's heading towards the curb. Do you know what it's doing? Absolutely. Um, if you say that people don't use the signals very well lane changing no they don't they tend to put the signals on as they are moving rather than well before they want to move i usually say at least three or four clicks of the indicator before you even think about moving and that then gives people time to actually um, act off that there's also a problem that we've seen many times that other people don't act in the correct way. They sometimes see the signal and then instantly close that space down. But I'm not going on to that topic today. We're, we're talking about the signal. So these signals that people put on, um, they can be helpful. But honestly, I look at other clues as well. I won't just be waiting for that signal. I'll be reading that car on the motorway that's catching the one up in front of it. And I'll even start to look to see whether the driver's looking in their mirror. And that's about different levels, and that's what 
we all should be trying to aspire to. Too many people just get in routine ways of doing things, but if you think of all the variables that are on the road with position of other vehicles around, speed, uh, proximity of danger, honestly, we can go on about all the variables for ages, but with all these variables, you cannot ever be doing things in a routine manner that's actually going to fit in with all these variables. So to the people who say, I'll put a signal on for everything, they're the ones who tend to signal in that routine manner. And honestly, they're the ones that forget about that routine. For example, I did have a situation the other day with um, a driving instructor who was teaching who is in this frame of mind of routine signaling all the time. And because they then we were parking in and because they then couldn't signal because of a side road on the left and they weren't able to put that signal on at their routine time they didn't then signal to park when it was pretty important because of a car that was quite close um, so that's really important to understand but we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in another video that I've got planned the video that I've got planned is I'm going to do one of my drive like an instructor videos and I'm actually going to talk about what signals I'm using, who it affects and why. I think that one would be a good one for my viewers to, to tune in to watch. If you think that would be useful, let us know in the comments.